Welcome to Enjoy Fort Wayne. This episode is brought to you by the Wild and I Farmers Market and highlights the 350 vendors that make up the number one market in the state of Indiana. Today we're talking to Tanya Samuels from Maria's Candles and More. What is more, you might ask? Well, you're going to have to listen and find out. She'll tell us how she got into entrepreneurship and what being a part of the market means for her. Subscribe wherever you get your podcasts and be sure to hit the notification bell on YouTube so you know when we drop new videos. So today, Tanya Samuels will help us enjoy Fort Wayne. My name is Tanya Samuels, and I am the owner of Maria's Candles and More. I make soy candles, and I also make greeting cards. How long have you been doing that? Ah, the candles I've been making since 2004. Um, just started as a hobby. Um, I have allergies and got to the point where I couldn't burn candles out of the store. Um, my sister-in-law suggested that I start making them. Um, at that time, I was kind of making homemade chocolates. Um, my mom's a baker, so I learned from her. And the consistency of the chocolates is similar to that of wax. Really? Yeah. So, and I've always been good at like mixing and colors and things like that. Most people probably know that, like, they're not dumbfounded by that, but I'm dumbfounded. Like, I didn't know that yeah, the it's consistency just, is kind of the same. I had no idea. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's weird. Like, if you're already kind of like into like baking and things, it was kind of like an easy um, transition. I'm into me. more eating. Yeah. And, you know. <laughs> And smelling the good Understood. smells. So yeah. I'm more in that frame. <laughs> well, I started that way. I, my mom started doing cake. She's a cake decorator. Um, I was in like second grade. So yeah, I kind of transitioned from just being the, the tester <laughs> into actually like assisting her, um, you know, in making. And the greeting cards just kind of, I think I've kind of just always done it and just given them out to people. But um this was probably like 2015 um, is when I kind of started doing them regularly. My family had a bakery when I lived in Indianapolis. Um, and my mom was like, people are always coming in here asking for birthday cards. And I was like, oh, well, I'll just make some. Not thinking it was going to really. To the bakery, off. they were asking. Because they would come in to pick up birthday cakes that she made for them. And then they would ask her, well, do you happen to have cards? I never thought of that. I didn't either, but she said she was starting to get customers regularly asking for birthday cards. Um, so I'm like, okay, well, I'll make some. And then we were coming up on Valentine's Day. So I was like, well, I'll do Valentine's too. And then I really kind of didn't think anything else of it. And then she's like, the cards are all gone. I sold them all. <laughs> I need you to make more. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> like, is this a thing now? You're like, it, right? Literally, it turned into a weekly. I was making cards for the bakery um and it was so funny because people were like we didn't know you were that crafty and I was like I just never it was just one of those things I just kind of always just made things for people but never thought to like turn it and and by that point I had already been doing cards for a, I mean candles for a long time never even thought to like add the cards to it so <laughs> so at what point did you say okay, I realize now this is a thing and I want to make this now my everyday, like this is what I want to do. Well, let's see. Um, so like 2004, I really didn't fully turn it into, like officially turn it into a business until 2012. Like when I first started. So it was a while. Yeah, I was just making them to give to people. On the side yeah. and just and not really making that much money necessarily. Nope. At first it, I wasn't even charging people. I was just making here them you as go. gifts. Okay. And people were like, you really need to sell these. So then I kind of started just selling them to coworkers. Never even thought of doing like farmers markets or anything. I was just selling to coworkers during the holidays <laughs> and then just giving them to family members. And then 2012, it was just like, it was such a turning point year for me. Um, and that fall, I was just like, you need to turn this into a business. I didn't know what I was doing or anything. Like I you know, paid a company to, to file all of my, you know, doing business paperwork. I had no idea. Um, Make an LLC, things yeah. like that, like the official. Yeah, yeah. and it was just kind of like from there, I'm like, so now what do I do? And you really just dove I in. I did. 
every day was a new experience because you didn't know I what was. I had no idea. I and You knew that, your product. <laughs> that was it. I just, I knew I had a great product. Other than that, I was just like, how do I get this out to, you know, other people? No idea. And I remember, so like I said, at the time, I was still living in Indianapolis. Um, and But I knew about the downtown farmer's market that was on Wednesdays. And I was like, well, let me just find out what I have to do to, you know, sign up for it. Um, I work, at the time I was still working in the office, I'm a web developer um, for a Catholic healthcare system. So sometimes our schedules were pretty flexible. I, like I'm completely, re- I've been remote since two, 2015, but prior to then, pretty flexible. If you needed to be remote mm-hmm. for a day, they were fine with it. Sure. So I'm like, okay, I'll work remote on market days. It was like 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. every Wednesday. Packed up my stuff, went downtown, set up. It was the craziest thing because I was so new, but the other vendors around me were so helpful. Um, they were like, you got to get a square. You know, people don't carry cash anymore. Like, I learned so much just that first week. But week after week, I just kept coming back and learning. And it was an experience. It was exhausting because people think I'm just this outgoing, like, bubbly person. I'm really an introvert. Um, I had to work really hard at learning how to just be out you know outgoing with people um you know my mom made me take speech when I was in high school you know when I was like in elementary middle school she made me join the cheer team to try to get me out of you know just being shell yeah (laughs) Yeah. and so even with that I've always tried to like do things to try to push me to get out of that um when I still worked in the office I joined Toastmasters that was like the scariest thing ever but I mean, I'm thankful I've done all those things because even now I still have to it, at the market, you know, I get prepared and I'm like, okay, people are going to start coming in. You mm-hmm. you can do this. But once I kind of click into that mode, like I'm good. And I just kind of keep going. I love talking to people. I love sharing my story. I love getting other people's stories. Um, I tell people, I was like, my goal with my business is similar to like when you go to Bath and Body Works or when you go to Starbucks. People go because they like the product, but also they like the experience, you know, that they get. And I want people to leave my booth feeling like they experienced something. So that's just something that I kind of like wrap all in, you know, into one thing. And how long then have you been in Fort Wayne? So I've been here since 2018, but I had been coming up here since 2012. Um, My boyfriend lives here. We met online. Um, so that's when I started coming up here and just kind of like going to events. So I had actually been doing like some of the smaller events um, for years prior to me moving here. Um, I'd done the events at the mall. Um, my products were in that. There was a store in the mall called Market in the Mall. Um, my candles were in there. I'd done e- monthly events at Spies Fieldhouse. So I'd kind of gotten to know some people, you know, around here. Um and then finally, I was just kind of like, I like it here. Like, I think I want to move here. Um, and like I said, 2015, I started working remote full time. So I'm like, okay, job's not an issue, you know? So just kind of buttoned down some other things. And literally that summer of 2018 was so crazy because I had, 2015, I went back to school to get another degree um, in biomedical engineering technology. So that summer of 2018, I was finishing my degree, had to do an internship, was still working full time, still doing my candles and packing (laughs) in like a three one time period. But I literally moved here, hit the ground running, doing events every weekend. Um, And so, yeah, here I am. (laughs) So what is one thing about Fort Wayne that you've learned i mean you had you didn't grow up here you haven't been coming here for all that long in the grand scheme of things so what is one thing about fort wayne that you really enjoy and and what is something that you like to do when you're not worried about doing any making any of your products or worried about sales or or you're not working what is something about fort wayne that you enjoy doing um I enjoy like the art scene here and how I feel like Fort Wayne as a city embraces small businesses. Um, That was something that stood out to me, you know, every time I came up here, it just always seemed to be something going on that involved, you know, 
small businesses and not saying that Indianapolis didn't, but I just felt like Fort Wayne almost like made that part of like city planning to include, you know, small businesses and entrepreneurs in, in that development. And that was something that just really, you know, stood out to me. And I'm like, gosh, I really feel like moving here would help me like take my candle business you know, to that next level. And it did, it, it pushed me, you know, to do more things and regular events and to kind of build up this following, you know, people who like look for you when you're going to be places. Um, and it's funny because the flip side of that is it kind of forced me more into like that whole social media um, landscape. And people were like, well, that should be easy for you. You know, you're a developer, you're on a computer all day. And I said, that's the point when I'm done working you that is the last do. thing I want to do so that had been challenging you know just kind of like you know staying engaged with my you know customers and just you know making it a community so once I started looking at it more like that versus like as a business then it kind of became easier because you know I like seeing posts from other people and I like when people post things and they're like oh my god I love my candles and so it's weird because you know, I mean, yes, I love, you know, the business side as far as like, you know, the financial side of this. But to me, I enjoy even more just making those connections with people. You know, even if it's a slow day, I'm like, if I got to connect with someone or even if I just had one new customer, like that's a win to me, you know. And I try to explain that to people, especially to new business, small business owners. Like you have to take each day at a time. You have to treat each event individually or you'll give up, you know, it's a, it's a growth, it's a process, it's a continuum. And if you reach just one person, then that was a successful event. So let's talk a little bit more about that because I wanted to ask you if someone came to you and they had a similar idea of starting a business or, or in general, they just want to start a business. What is something that you would, a piece of advice that you would give them? Um, what I tend to share with people is, yeah, I've had people say, oh my gosh, I couldn't start a business. I don't know what I would do. And I said, first start with, what are you passionate about? Um, people tend not to last in their new business if they're not passionate about what they're doing. Um, unfortunately, I saw that a lot, you know, during the pandemic because people were, and I get it, you know, you're like, hey, I've got to find a new money source. I have to new, find a new source of income. And so they weren't necessarily chasing a passion. They were trying to quickly figure out how can I make money. And that could sustain you for a little while. But it's not going to get you through those slow times or those bad days. Because then you're like, I don't want to do this anymore. Because you're not passionate you're about not it. You're passionate about it. But when you're passionate, you're going to give it your all. Whether there's... 50 people or five people, <laughs> you know, you're going to give that mm. same energy week after week, whether it's, you know, cold outside, hot outside, <laughs> freezing cold. And I mean, those of us that do the market, you know, you have to have a passion to get up, you know, every Saturday morning and pack up the car, no matter what the weather is like and head out to your events. And so I tell people, start with something that's a passion of yours or start with something that was was a need that you personally had. Like for me, making candles was a, it started as a personal need because I've loved candles since I was a kid, you know? And so that love of candles and then becoming an adult and then allergies and, oh my gosh, I can't burn candles out of the store anymore. How do I fix that need? And so that started as a personal need. And it was weird because for a long time, I didn't always share that story with people, but a lot of my customers were like, you need to share that piece because it's helped so many other people who are like, oh my gosh, I have allergies too. Or someone in my house has allergies. I can't burn candles, but I can burn yours. And I love hearing those stories, you know, from people because I take what I present to everyone hard, you know, and I, you know, not only am I offering something to other people, but I am my own customer. So I put that thought into you know, every candle that I make, every new scent that I, combination that I come up with, I know it has to work for me personally. And then I'm keeping in mind, you know, my customers out there who have allergies or things like that. So, you know, it's not just, 
a job. It's not just a money maker. Like it's something that I love to do and I love being able to share that with other people. Love that. That's a great attitude to have and it keeps you week to week when you're passionate about it that if you have a bad week, hey, it's all right. I'll get it better next week mm-hmm. when you're passionate about it. Let's talk a little bit about the market. How long have you been doing the Wild and I Farmers Market and are you there every week or how does that work? So um, this past summer was my first time regularly doing the market. Um, it was one of those things. People had been telling me about it for years. They're like, oh my gosh, you really need to do that market. And I'd been coming to it just as a customer and I was scared. I was just like, I don't know if I'm ready. It's for too it. big. Yeah, or just, that oh is my gosh. what I felt. And so I'm like, I don't know if I'm ready to handle this like on a weekly basis. It's one thing to do a big event that's like three days and it's once a year. Right, and it's done with. But that, while and I is that every weekend. Like, (laughs) thousands of people every weekend. And so, I was just like, are you ready for this? Can you do this? (laughs) And I was so nervous that first, you know, Saturday. But it was amazing. I'm going to say, how'd it go? It was awesome. (laughs) I did that Saturday and the following Saturday. I think this was back in June. Um, And then I was like, okay, you you can handle this. Like, all right, I'll go back next week. (laughs) So I started out doing just like two Saturdays a month. And then as the fall went on, I was like, okay, you can, you can do this. And then I started doing, you know, more regularly and it was, it was a lot. Like I had to really like figure out like for me schedule of, Hey, you sold out this week. Okay. You're scheduled for next week. You've got to get product made. So six days. Yeah, literally (laughs) it was just, so I was like on my goal was, getting to the point where I had product on the shelf, you know, to not only, cause I was also doing other markets. I was doing Sunday markets. I was doing sure. other events. I had a big event in Indy that I did the Christmas gift and hobby show. So it was just like it, when I tell you it pushed me to that limit of managing my time, getting products done and still working a day job. Um, it was a lot, but I look back at it. I'm like, but I had an amazing year and I met so many amazing people doing that market and I'm like you should have been doing this you know (laughs) all along but you know I had to get to that point where I was you know I felt was I was ready um because I I've followed so many vendors at the market and seen how well they'd grown since I met them and it was it was a little fear of I don't know if I can do this. I don't want to fail. I don't want to be like, oh, I didn't make enough. Oh, I sold out. Oh, I (laughs) all those things were going through my head. But I was like, no, you can do this. Just stay on top of it. Um, So, no, I'm glad I did. I'm so looking forward to, you know, the rest of the year. Then I was nervous about the winter market. I'm like, are people going to come out? Right. No. And even that's been just amazing. (laughs) Like even on days when it was like super cold and I'm like, no, they've been coming. Like, they have been amazing. <laughs> yeah. They're like, we're going to bundle up and we're coming out here. So, you know, I took some time, taking some time off right now to just kind of like recoup, you know, inventory, figure out what I've got to order, things like that. But I'm like, I'm excited. Like literally, it, well, I was just thinking the other day, I was like, I missed the market. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite thing about, about it? Just the atmosphere. Like it's just... Like people come through the door and they, they're just like excited to see like what we had this week. Like it's just amazing. And, you know, just shopping with the other vendors. Like I tell people, I said, I feel blessed and I'm spoiled because there's so many things that I buy at the market that I used to get, you know, at the grocery store and other places. And I'm like, no, it's like I'm shopping at the market first. Then if there are other things I need to get, then I'll <laughs> go to the You've transformed the way you shop even. <laughs> Literally, it's just like market first and then go somewhere else. And I'm I'm trying to be that way with, you know, not just like with my food, but if I need to get gifts for someone or I need something at home, my first thought is, have I seen this at the market? Well, let me check on Saturday <laughs> before I go yeah. out to a store and buy this. And that's one of my things. I don't mind getting on my soapbox about that and sharing that with other people how important it is to shop local and how that's how we build community. That's how we transform our communities. One business at a time is that way. And then just getting in that mindset of 
let me see if I can buy this from the market before I go somewhere else first. Mm -hmm. And if we all, you know, start to do that more and more, then everybody wins, you know? So yeah, I always get on my soapbox about no, that. No, I, <laughs> I love it. Yeah, from hoodies to beef jerky to candles, go to the market first, yeah, right? Definitely. And see what, yeah, awesome. So we talked a lot about a lot of positive things that you see going on in Fort Wayne, but I want to ask you, do you see a a challenge, maybe one above any others? Like, what would you say the biggest challenge for Fort Wayne is moving forward? Um, I would like to see more, um, I guess, continuity, like between different groups. You know, whether it's an event, whether it's other markets, um, I just would like to see like more promotion across, you know, cross promotion. Cross promotion. Yeah, sure. Um, because I liken it, I see it as this. You know, we've got several other markets. We have always events going on, um, and I see some things get promoted more than others. And I look at it this way: just like you go in the grocery store, and there might be twenty different brands of, you know barbecue sauce or other things like there's room for all of us right so that's just something that um i've kind of noticed that there might be like almost like a popularity thing where there's like pockets of you know areas that are promoted more than others and so that's just something i think could be worked on for sure there's aspects of fort wayne where you say it's a little big city and there's aspects where you say it's a big little mm -hmm. city and so the positives are when, when you say it's a little big city, it's some positives are, oh, the sense of community and all of that. And then when you say, well, it's kind of like a big little city. Well, the big aspect is you're going to have some of that that you talk about. Like you said, quote unquote, popularity contest. Definitely. Yeah. I see that as well. So, no, that's a good point, though. So I have one final question for you. Are you ready? I'm ready. OK. If you were to purchase a billboard that was so high in the sky that everyone in Fort Wayne could see it what would it say huh, I thought this one over um it's a and I didn't come up with <laughs> an easy um easy answer um I don't know it's a combination of of things um kind of just like you know reach for the stars um i have um I'm trying to think what it is um kind of like this little nickname that i kind of gave myself and it's it's wind song um and kind of what that is is it's just kind of like you know sing i sing also so but it's just like singing through your whatever it is you're dealing with like soaring and singing through life and so for me, like, I'm always seeing music. I'm always seeing music notes. I'm always seeing. Um, and so I would, it would just be something like, you know, soaring and just pictures of music notes and just encouraging people, like, no matter what it is you're doing, just like reach for the stars, just soar on that song in your heart, you know, and that can transpire into just everything in, in your life, you know. There are things we can control. There are things we can't control, you know, um, but that would. And so that's one thing that I've kind of always like thought about as a kid. I was always fascinated with the flame of a candle. Like literally, I would just sit there for hours and I would just watch a candle burn. Um, so it was just really something that that ended up becoming, you know, my thing. You know, I make candles and I just feel like it's like that beacon of light, you know, that no matter what you might be going through, like that flame, you know, it's just almost like that, you know, follow, you see, hear people say, you know, follow your North star. It's like that flame is like leading you to that destiny, you know, that's there for you. So I, I just feel like it was like destined for me to, that this would be the thing, you know, um, that I would do. And just like, same thing, even like with my card making, um, you know, I've had people say, oh, you could just, easily come up with some designs and you can just get those printed off and I'm like I don't want to do that there there's something about like actually cutting paper there's something about the textures and like building a card and putting all these pieces together 
it's like I'm pouring out. You it's your know. baby. Yeah. I mean, it's yours. You know, and it's, you know, to me, I wouldn't get that same effect if I designed something and just got it, you know, printed off. Yeah, it's harder, you know, because I'm literally sitting here and I'm, you know, stamping things and coloring them and cutting them out. But the satisfaction that I have of like seeing this finished product and sharing that with other people is just, it's amazing. So it's like my way of pouring out like that positive energy into my work and then it kind of gets packaged up and you're able to carry that off with you. Oh, I love that. Thanks so much for being here. This podcast is brought to you by Caraggio Media. The show was edited by me and sponsored by the Wild and I Farmers Market. Follow them on Facebook and Instagram for all the latest updates. We will see you next week where we will be sure to show you how you can enjoy Fort Wayne.